Right, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. Um, today is a long awaited, long overdue um, plant tour. So I'm going to be showing you around my room. Um, there are certain parts I'm not going to be showing. Um, and one of my plants has sadly died, um, but I kind of let it die, so not so sad. But um, I brought up one of my house plants from downstairs, which you guys haven't seen in a long time. I'll quickly show you that first. I will be walking around with them, um, not with the plants, but like walking around to show you them. Um, but this one was obviously downstairs so it doesn't have a space in my room but this is my begonia rex um just begonia rex i'm not sure of the the cultivar name um but this one is doing amazing and it has actually changed color a lot so i don't know i'll try and find a picture or show you guys what it looked like before but the coloration on the leaves was a lot more um uh clear i suppose like the colours were a lot more contrasting whereas now they're a bit more merged together and less vibrant but I do really like how dark that's gone it kind of I kind of prefer it like this so um, this has actually died down to the soil and resurrected itself about five times because I'll leave it such a long time without watering and then um, it'll basically die down then I'll start watering it again and then it'll just explode again like this so I'm going to try not to let that happen again, um, no promises, but it is just lovely, it's huge, and it's still in the same pot that I planted it in when I first got it. No feed, no fertiliser, nothing, just just regular multi-purpose compost, and it's doing really good. And this doesn't have a hole in the bottom, so that's why I get cautious with watering. I mean, they, they prefer to be on the moister side, I believe, but then saying that this one does like to dry out between watering i kind of let it wilt and then rewater it now which um i wouldn't recommend you do but that is what i do with this just because it's not in my room so it's not directly there all the time um anyway i've been talking about this one plant for two minutes but that is lovely that's probably one of my nicest showy off plants at the moment um, apart from this guy down here which you all know that i love um yeah i do, do need to go through and pluck off some dead leaves down there but that's a job for another time <laughs> right so yeah i'm gonna get on with the get on with the um with the tour um if you guys want to see more or you are excited about what i'm about to show you please definitely subscribe leave a comment um, let me know what your favorite plant is that i have um but yeah if you guys could subscribe that will really um, help me out um a bunch and yeah i look forward to seeing more of you join because i'm on I'm coming up to 2,500 now, which is amazing, and I'm really excited about that. So thank you all so much, and yeah, I'm going to get on with the tour. Right, so first up here is my um, Epipremnum skimdaptus, skimdaptus pictus, um, and this has put on quite a lot of growth. Um, it's got this one really long trailing one here, which has actually lo lost, what, lost one leaf. Um, so I may end up propagating that, but I'll wait for that leaf to harden off because that's quite a new leaf open there um, but that's still looking really nice and this is on my bedside table usually um, and it's doing really well there's still that one burnt leaf but other than that everything else is looking fine oh and this one crinkled leaf but other than those two <laughs> everything's fine um, looking good it's it's quite a slow growing but fast growing at the same time so it's like it will grow every now and then it'll take a really long time between growing but then when it does grow it grows quick so like I, f I believe these two leaves here um, both came in within the last couple of weeks so um, and then here as well these two leaves are fairly new and then up the back here which yeah that li leaf's really new as well um, but yeah this is basically a one-sided shower the back is pretty bare because the back's up against the wall so um, yeah still one of my favorites and it's looking really good um, I water this I let it dry out and then water it um, I I try not to let the leaves wilt or curl up because these go more curled on the edges when, when they need watering, um, but that is a good indication of how to know. Right, so next we're going to move on to my uh, Skindapsus pictus enjoy, which is sadly looking sad. <laughs> I'll try and pop that on there. Um, right, so the... The, all the you see all the burning on the leaves this is where the window it's in is it's a what, 
and there's a north facing window but then in the middle of summer where we have been and kind of still are the sun comes directly through which um, has burnt a lot of the variegated leaves um, which is unfortunate because that's irreversible but it is what it is and it doesn't take away too much if you kind of squint <laughs> it doesn't look too bad but I still really like it and maybe I'll take some cuttings to try and create a new plant but this is a very very slow growing variety and then in the back we have quite a few dried leaves which I need to cut off but um, still a really pretty pretty plant just a shame about all the burns but that is what it is um, but like I say I can definitely propagate it to grow and like some some nice new leaves that don't have the burning and then put it in a more appropriate place um, but like I said, in, uh, win when winter comes around, it, it can stay there and it'll be absolutely fine because it doesn't get it doesn't get that direct light. Um, but yeah, it's done a lot of growing since I've had it. Um, yeah, let's just move on. And I still love that pot as well. That pot is just so nice. Um, right, next. Right, next up we have my little begonias that I bought um, from... Um, that's just soil under, under my nail, by the way. If we... Um, I bought these from Dibley's. Oh, it says it right there. <laughs> the ones that I bought from Dibley's Nursery, which I did an unboxing on a while back. These are put on a lot of growth. This is the sea urchin, Begonia sea urchin. And it's not showing full sea urchin traits yet, but you can kind of see on this leaf, um, the edges starting to curl up and then it shows like those under leaf hairs, um, but on top of the leaves and that is where it gets its name from but it's looking very very healthy really happy with this one and there's an interesting pad like markings on that leaf in there can you see that in there like i'd i'd got it i'm not sure if it's variegation i'm hoping it is but um it hasn't shown on any of the other leaves so we're just gonna have to wait and see but definitely definitely one of my favorites it looks so lovely and as it gets bigger it's gonna look really good Right, and then next we have the um, begonia, what, the black fang begonia. My hand's shaking, sorry. Um, which is also growing really, really nicely. And um, these leaves are getting nice and big. So that that is actually one leaf there. It looks like two. but um, So they're getting, getting some size on them. Um, and I've only watered these, I believe, once um, since... No, it must have been more than once. It feels like it's only once. I don't water them very often. Um, but at the moment it's quite heavy and it's um, still quite moist um, so I'm not going to water that for a little while yet but he's looking really good right so next here is my Sansevieria Silver Flame and this is doing amazing no nothing negative going on here touch wood um, look at the colour on that new leaf as well that is just amazing it's like a, quite a light colour and then as it matures it will turn a lot darker so there are still currently only three growth points on here, but all really healthy and looking good. Um, that is just such an amazing display. I need to get it a really nice pot, but then at the same time, I really don't mind it being just this black nursery pot, um, but looks amazing, especially with like the, the plain background. It looks really good. Um, so yeah, now I'll take you over to my desk and we'll show you what's over on my little growing station. Right, so to start off here, I've just got some propagations in here. So there is a Crisula variegata, um, some Echeveria, um, and then that giant leaf uh, succulent, which I, <laughs> the name has um, not come to me. Um, and then here I've got my bird of paradise, which is looking a little worse for wear still. I mean, it's not declining. Um, I was worried that it, maybe it was root rot. Um, sorry about my nail. It's, I promise it's just like garden soil. Um, I was worried it was root rot, so I'm letting it dry out a little bit and then kind of watering it every now and again rather than constantly. Um, then back here I've got my... This lighting is not working... Um, just my one of my euphorbias here, which doesn't, um, I don't have the name, but that lighting is really terrible. There you go. Uh, but he's doing alright, he's not put on much growth, and he's a little bit rocky in there, pardon the pun. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, but he's just doing fine. And it just reminds me of one of those, um, 
the character from Monsters Inc. I, I can't remember which one it is, but it just reminds me of that. Um, then here I have my um, Epiphyllum ang Anguliga, something along the lines of that, um, and it's putting on a lot of new growth down there. Um, doing really, really well. There's like three or four new new shoots coming up, and then these two here are very recent growths. Right, and then here I have my Aloe um, Aloe Somaliensis. And it is currently sending up a flower shoot, which is really exciting. And that should hopefully not grow too tall because it's very close to the roof already. Um, but he's doing really, really well. And there's a lot of new growth in there. And then down here, I have my um, Crisula ovata, one of my Christmas cactus, um, an Echeveria, um, a Crisula um, goblin, I believe it is, behind him. And then a smaller variety of Crisula. And then here, um, pardon all my weird stuff, just there. Um, here I have uh, Saracenia seedlings. This is Alata Black Tube, cross Alata Black Tube. Um, and these have are taking a very long time to grow, but this new trap coming up here is doing really well. And I believe there's five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, then, no, there was six because there's like another one butted up against that one. Um, but they're doing okay. I'm probably going to move those outside for a couple of months um, before winter comes and then bring them back in. Right. And then over here, this is one of my aloes, which was in one of my recent videos. Another one of my aloes that was in a recent video. And then my pinguicula weezer, which one of these I accidentally just knocked. So... I'm going to be transplanting this guy because he's really in need of it. And he's divided into three. Whoops, I keep knocking. I just stop touching it. <laughs> right, and then uh, my Chlorophytum here, which was a gift from Holly here on YouTube, um, which he's grown really, really well. Um, these were also gifts from Holly um, and the Epiphyllum. Oh, what else? She gave me a lot of stuff. <laughs> and then I have my Chrysula Goblin, my... Um, uh, like... I'm sure it's called Goblin, or commonly known as um, Ogre Ears, and he's doing really, really well, um, growing a lot. He really sulks. He, he'll go really wrinkly, and then I'll water it, and it'll pick up within a day. So, um, And then over here in the back, if I just move that gently, uh, we have this Ledborea. Um, let me bring this forward, just so you can see a little better. Um, it's doing really well, no flowers yet. I'm not sure what time of the year these do flower, um, but he's still looking good. And I do like it in that terracotta pot, although he dries out, but he doesn't tend to mind drying out, um, I, I've found anyway. I mean, don't get me wrong, it looks a bit messy, but I mean, the foliage looking looking fine. It's just like the, the bulbs. Um, they've got like the scales and skin coming off, but um, he's doing well other than that, so. This lighting is really not working. Um, I'm going to turn my grow light off when I come around this way a little bit more. Right, so then just finishing off down here, I have one of my Echeverias here, which has gone very lopsided, but he's still looking really pretty on top. I've got some sedum cuttings here, um, a cactus, another cactus. These two are unknown varieties. And then an Echeveria, which I never actually took the label off. So no, it just still says Echeveria. Right, and then moving on. Here I've got one of my um, Sansevierias. This is Sansevieria trifasciata variegata. Um, I don't, it looks like it's going to be the shorter variety, so um, I'm not 100% sure of that name. But he's there, then we've got the Philodendron, um, Philodendron Mykens here, um, which is looking a bit worse for wear. He, he dried out, dropped a lot of his leaves, and now I'm just trying to rejuvenate it. I'm thinking potentially, well, I think I'm definitely going to cut off a lot of this growth um, and then try just a lot of cuttings just to pr like produce a new plant. Then here I've got my, um, my Serapegia woodii variegata, which has put on a lot of growth, if I just show you down there. Doing really, really nice. Um, a bit bare at the top, but that's kind of the way he's always been. Right, and then in this corner here is the Dendrobium Orchid. I have my Sansevieria Whales Fin, which is Sansevieria Obesa. 
and it's finally putting on some nice growth there. You see there's actually two leaves coming up. Um, sorry about the shading. Um, so he's doing really, really well and I'm interested to see how large those leaves grow because um, I'm probably expecting them to be smaller than this one but I'm definitely not sure because this was just a leaf cutting um, that I purchased for $5.99 and he's growing them. So really they should be smaller um, than him but we'll definitely see. And then I have my San, um, Sansevieria Moonshine here which is finally really healthy and he's putting on a lot of new growth. You see the lighter coloured growth there, um, so, really sorry about the lighting, but that is the new growth, um, he's doing really really well. Um, down here I've just got, oh, my um, my little Euphorbia Obesa there, which is doing really really well, um, well I mean he still looks the same. <laughs> and then in here I have my Pingicula um, Pullings, and then just one or two cuttings, uh, leaf cuttings of the um, begonia and then I've got my aloe here let's just move that wire um, aloe um, pink blush which I showed you guys recently still doing fine in these pots I just have a lot of um, propagations so these are just water propagations of drosera um, in the back there I just have one of my planted containers which just sits under my grow light it doesn't um, really get enjoyed in the way it should and then there with the cobweb on the wall <laughs> I have my um, uh, Sansevieria cylindrica, the starfish Sansevieria um, and then yeah these are just cuttings so just in there they're growing that is some filiformis cuttings yeah so they're all doing alright right here I have my ficus elastica um, this new leaf got really burnt by my grow light so I've moved it away from the grow light and it is more in a shaded spot or a, well, dimmer light spot. Um, but he's growing a new leaf there, so hopefully that one doesn't get burnt this time. Um, but he's still doing okay. I still need to transplant him. He's in his nursery pot. But um, still really p pretty. I'm just really upset. Well, just, it's quite frustrating about that leaf. But it will definitely grow out of it. And as soon as it gets taller, um, you won't really notice that leaf um, but yeah he's doing really nice growing right here I've got this guy which I still um, I, I'm a couple of you did let me know the name of it in my previous video but I sorry I do not remember um, I will definitely need to write it down I just bought some new sharpies so I can write labels again but he's still doing really good um, no new growth as far as I can tell but he's really heavy and he's looking very nice he's just under my grow light at the moment I'm just waiting to, I'm going to transplant him, but I'm not really sure into what size pot and what kind of look I want to go for. But he's still doing really well and I still just want to take a bite out of it. <laughs> just gives me that urge. It looks so nice. Um, so yeah, there's that guy. Right, and here is a really pretty Tradescantia. I'm not sure of the variety name, uh, but this was given, me, um, given to me by a carnivorous plant girl. Um, and this is just looking lovely and I think I've figured out how finally how to look after it so this likes to really dry out in between watering um, as my last one did rot off which I'm re I'm an underwater I'm not an overwaterer so um, I must have it must really like to dry out between watering but it's really pretty the colors on the underside of the leaf are just incredible so lovely lovely little plant um, I do need to get it a nice little pot I do have some pots actually so I could probably pot it up um, but he's looking lovely right and up here I have my Peperomia angulata which is growing incredible still looking so healthy and it grows it grows really slowly but slow enough that it never looks like it's not growing if that makes sense no I don't really know if that makes sense but it just looks really good and it doesn't ever become a problem because of how slow it grows so I'm not sure how well you can see that but he's doing really really well and there's a lot of flowers coming up which look interesting they're like little rat's tails um, so yeah that's doing really really well here is my amazing um, dead um, nepenthes there which I'm that was the plant I mentioned that had died which is a little bit um, I don't know like I'm I'm not too bothered because I kind of fell out of love with it but um, it gives me a nice place to put a new plant then my um, Serapedia woodii which I've just been wrapping and wrapping around because it just has been growing like crazy and it's dropping its leaves at the moment because 
I haven't watered it and I need to, I'm going to propagate it, get rid of the main plant, propagate it and then keep the propagations. Um, here is my lovely Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess and it is doing great, it's really really looking good. Put on so much growth but th this again grows, it grows slow enough that it doesn't become a problem but quick enough that you notice when it grows if that makes sense. Um, but he's looking really nice in this pot. Yeah, oh, there's a lot around here as well. So yeah, he's doing really, really well. Right, so now that I'm adequately sweating from that, every time, I don't know why, every time I walk around my room with my camera, it makes me just sweat. Um, but I'm gonna finish off quickly with my Calathea orbifolia, which is looking, I go through phases of thinking it's lovely and then thinking I'm not sure about it. Um, and I think at the moment, it, I'm on that not sure about it situation. Um, but yeah, it's really big. The the leaves, oh, I don't know, like the leaves do go burnt around the edges like this, but that is such an old leaf that I, I wouldn't argue that it's age, but I think age definitely has something to do with the leaves crisping in my room as opposed to the humidity. Oh, it's very humid in here a lot of the time. Um, but let me try and get this all on camera. I actually just trimmed it as well. So there's that. I got this from Ikea um, about a year ago and it's just doing great. This may be my thumbnail, um, but it's doing really good. And I'm actually, I'm thinking about actually just planting it into that pot because it's just in its nursery pot still. If I can get it out and show you. So it's just in that pot that's inside the bigger pot. There's actually quite a small pot if you consider how big the plant is. Um, so yeah, I think I will just pot it into the, the bigger pot. It'll definitely make watering a little bit easier um, because I, I water this, I really let it dry up between watering, which is probably why it's crispy, but um, <laughs> we won't talk about that. But yeah, I, I don't water it too often. I've watered it today um, and that's about it really. That's yeah, that's all I do with it, just water it. And it stays in a really, really low light level spot in my room because it's like in the center. Not that you know what my room looks like, but I guess you do. Um, uh, I hope that was good fun for all of you and a nice update to finally see some of my um, plants again because I haven't done a full tour in quite a while. So um, yeah, there's a couple of them dying, the Serapegia woodyai dying, the Nepenthes hookeriana die dead um, but it leaves a nice space for something new and the Serapegia woodyai I've been I just love that plant I don't know why I think I just I love it but I don't like it there and I don't like it how big it is so potentially potentially I'll get rid of my Serapegia woodyai the normal one and then just keep the Serapegia woodyai very garter and potentially I potentially potentially I could put it up there to replace that one um, might be an idea but I will definitely have a think about that yeah so definitely let me know what your favorite one was and I will definitely be interested to know um, and then I do have I've got a terrarium which I've shown you guys before but I'm thinking about doing a video on that um, but it's got um, it does have a tarantula in it so let me know if you guys would be interested to see that because I want to keep my channel strictly plants I don't want to make it like a pet channel or introduce anything like that but if you guys are interested to see because I also have um, I'll get him out I'll show you my one of my pets not the tarantula I'm getting that out right so this is my African purple striped uh, millipede which is a very odd pet but I don't know it's not gonna focus very well let me see if I can focus it. Focus. No, he's not going to focus. There you go. It's like it's kind of focused there. But he is. I don't know how old he is. I've had him for. I've only had him for a few months. But he is really cute. And he eats like lettuce and tomato and leaves. <laughs> so, like the perfect pet for me. Um, so, yeah, there's him. But I do have. A, like, I've got tarantulas as well, which are kind of. Um, interesting but they do less than what this one does so let me know if you guys would ever be interested to see like their enclosures or anything like that i don't know if i'll do anything like that but like i said one of my tarantulas um homes is the terrarium which looks really nice and it's full of plants so that's that'd be the only reason i'd want to show that but yeah there's him his name is sprout <laughs> 
and um, he's probably a little bit annoyed that I just woke him up but I'll put him back in his little cage so yeah anyway um, if you guys enjoyed this video definitely leave a thumbs up leave a like and um, f thank you all for watching and I'll see you in my next video